right i believe this is day 68 blood fill and uh, according to liquid is an easy problem but again we're still evaluating the uh, backtracking pattern which typically involves recursion so in my opinion should be nothing less than a medium uh amazon seems to love this problem right i mean seven people according to liquid reported being asked this question in the past six months and it is not too bad to, to be frank and although understanding the problem by reading is one of the harder parts of things so uh pay close attention let's get to it also with these videos you feel free to put it at 1.5x speed right and just like rewind and fast forward as much as you want you want you want if you feel like i'm talking a bit too slow statement we were given the following values as inputs to begin with the coordinates of a source cell so source row sr source row sc source column so coordinates of sr source row source column so kind of like x and y actually in this case y and x because the rows are vertical the columns are um, and the columns are vertical in this way but they proceed like along the x-axis while rows increment or decrement along the y-axis a target value called target and m by n grid and our task is to perform plot fill by updating the values of the four directionally connected cells and this is a point of potential confusion so we want to perform flood fill it's a process and what is that process it updates the values of the four directionally connected cells and what they mean is uh vertically and horizontally the cells that are connected to that particular cell that we're given vertically and horizontally not diagonally so uh which have the same value as the source cell with the target value okay so the image is going to do do us justice more than explaining this i would say so let's just focus on that for now. So for example, we are given um, the source S, the source row is one, the column is two. So row one, we can do it this way, and column two, right? And then the target is three. So we want to change this value to three and everything that is connected to it that has this value of one horizontally and vertically. So you can see these ones here are all connected, right? Except this and these these ones over here and so that's what we see happens right we change that to three and then everything that was connected right even by not not necessarily directly right if it's connected to the thing to this that was connected to this originally we change everything to three like so and it looks like that at the end okay that's what all the text is trying to explain and then this is another example where okay we have a source row of two source column of three so we go to two two i mean two and two sorry where did i get three from it's kind of weird uh, and we want to change the target to two and change everything connected to it so we change that first cell to two as you can see here and everything that's connected is going to change but these ones didn't change you would note because they're connected diagonally not uh directionally Oh, and this one is interesting. This pattern is interesting. Uh, it's so row one, column three. That's over here. The target is one. Oh, it's already one. How about that? So they're already what they are. So there's nothing to iterate on. Um, so there was nothing to change in this case. Right. We look through the whole thing and find out that there is actually nothing to change. okay onwards to the solution so for the solution i'd like to walk through part of what they're saying with the code uh so the idea is to change the value of the cells in the grid using the depth first search algorithm so we're using that algorithm and we we start by checking the value of the starting cell and if it already matches the desired target value the grid is returned unaltered okay and what does that look like that looks like this so we have this float field algorithm over here and we're passing a grid the source row source column and the target and like we say here if it already has the same value of the target return the original grid we don't need to iterate through the whole grid in this case so if it's what we want already just say oh we're done x out of it and else is where all the magic happens right it's where the good things happen However, if the value of the starting cell is different from the target value, then we need to update the value of all four directionally connected cells. So all the party, the party happens here. And 
we'll replace the value of the starting cell with the target value and then use a depth first search algorithm to visit the four adjacent cells with the same value as the starting cell. If they have the same value as the starting cell, their value is updated uh, to the target value. And this process is repeated until all connected cells of the starting cell have been visited and their values replaced. And there's an illustration, but before we do that, let's look at some code. So we're gonna store the original value of the starting cell in old target, right? And it will help us match the values of the neighboring cells. So we have old target, right? What it, what it was, because it, it determines what we end up changing. And we are gonna replace the value of the starting cell with the specified target. Okay, so this first cell, we've, we've copied what it was before, its former value. And we're going to change, we have a target, what we want to change to. And we're going to insert that into the position in the grid. So basically in this case, right, in the case of this diagram, we will, uh, we have this, this value here. We will co copy one into old target. So old target is going to be one in this case. And we're going to change one to the target of two, which is what we want. And that's what that looks like here. Okay. And then we run that new grid, that updated grid into this depth first search algorithm with our source row, source column, old target and target and a new target. Okay. All right. And when we're done, we return the modified grid. Okay. So now next we're going to look into this depth first search algorithm, what, what, what all that entails. So in the DFS algorithm, how do we get, how do we move around? First of all, we need to know what the adjacent cells are. So, and as you can see in the comments, uh, this tells us to move to the right. This tells us uh, to move down. This tells us to move up and this tells us, us to move left. So that's how we get around. And we're gonna get the length of the grid and the length of each row. So the grid length and the, so basically breadth and length, right? Of the grid, so that's what this, this is. Um, and so with that for each cell in the list of adjacent cells so we're going to loop through this because you can see we stored it in an array um we're going to get the cell value so whatever the adjacent cell is either one of these right that's what's going to be stored in this cell value here you can see and then we're gonna get the row and column indices of the adjacent cell. So whatever row we passed into the DFS function over here in the beginning, we'll add it to the, the first thing to it and the second thing to it. Now, if it's within the bounds of the grid, cause it's possible to go off grid and have, it has the same value as the starting cell. So that's what this check is. We're checking, oh, are we still within the bounds of the grid here? On, on the left, I mean, on the top actually. And on the bottom, Actually, this is the bottom and this is the top. And then on the left, on the right and on the left for the columns and the rows. So that's what we're checking. Are we still within the bounds? And is this equal to the old target, right? The thing that, did it, did it, did it have that shared value? If all of these are true, yeah? Replace the value of the adjacent cell with the specified target, as you can see here. And then recursively call the DFS function on the adjacent cell to repeat the process. So the grid, the updated grid, which we changed it here. Um, uh, the row that we've been passing through, right, right, that we've updated actually, we've updated it right over here. Uh, the column, the old target, right? That doesn't change throughout. And the new target, right? That also doesn't change throughout. So that's all, that's all. And then this is gonna automatically do the stepping for you. And the back, including the backtracking, right? Coming back up. So, I mean, once again, a recursive algorithm, right? So super elegant, almost like magic, which is why like for like when safety is a major issue, you tend to go with the iter iterative solution. So you can feel free to look up the iterative, iterative solution to this problem. It's out of scope for now, because we're out of time, but uh, that's all, that's all there is to this problem. Once you uh, put that in there, it's gonna, it's gonna, like almost intelligent or seemingly intelligent backtrack as necessary, go in, come back down, check that, come back, etc. So you get to the end. Okay. Fantastic. All right, let's uh look up the time complexity. 
So is uh, linear time with the si grows linearly with the size of the grid, and space complexity as well grows linearly with the size of the grid. And that's all there is to it. See you in the next one. Ciao.